want to. I don't care what people think anymore. This is about the music. And if you have a problem with it, then you don't listen. You don't listen to Ruthie Foster. I'm cool with that. <laughs> What did you find to be the common thread in your subjects and their careers? Was there an emotional and spiritual component that struck you from the interviewees? I think their authenticity was one of the things that, that was consistent throughout everyone's story. Although, I don't know, as I'm, I'm saying this out loud, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, the exception of, you know, Kai Fleming. I mean, Kai had to put her sexuality on the shelf and, uh, and she paid a price for it. Um, she paid an emotional price for it. Um, I mean, I, I think uh, some of that came out in the interview. Some of that's in the film. The thing that I was the most fascinated with as I was interviewing these women was how did they deal with it? What kind of compromises did they have to make? What were the costs of those um, choices? Uh, how they dealt with this and the impact that it had on their artistry um, is, is probably a, a very consistent thread. So, of course, we were just talking about this. The Southern and country music industry has historically been male, with concessions to female singer-songwriters when their markets and songs could not be ignored. Do you feel the industry evolved faster because outsiders work so hard to be heard? Yeah, I mean, I, I think country still has a very long way to go. You know, they're controlled by um, uh, a really small number of entities. You know, it's, it's greatly influenced by country radio. Right. Um, and uh, uh, country radio is, is owned by two or three companies. So if you're not on a major label, you're not going to get airplay. And without airplay, you're not going to have much of a career. Um, there's a, 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 one of the experts that we talked to in the film, Robert Orman, um, you know, he, he says in the film, he can't wait for terrestrial radio to die. Um, I think probably some of the more interesting music is, is, is uh, in Americana. Uh, Americana tends to be more inclusive. I think that, uh, uh, you know, it's probably Americana is why Brandy Carlisle has a career. Mm -hmm. um, not, not necessarily country. You know, these, these corporations are controlling far too much of, uh, and, and uh, white males. Uh, white male, white heterosexual males are controlling too much of the industry still. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of misogyny in this industry as well. And uh, women are grossly underrepresented. Um, all women, not just gay women. So there was a study in 2019 of radio airplay and only 13% of country radio airplay was women. The rest was men. And there used to be a rule, an open rule, um, in country radio that you only played two women for every 10 men and never two in a row. Now they don't say that anymore, but at 13% is actually less than two for every 10. So, I mean, I think, I think we still have a, a long way to go. Okay. Um, the trans, the transition person, the former Cindy Bullens was mm -hmm. one of the most extraordinary stories. What can we learn from him that struck you so profoundly? Sydney's had quite a life. I mean, he's, and, uh, you know, he didn't fit the mold of what we were uh, initially started out to do with the film, which was we just wanted to focus on women um, because we, you know, for a variety of reasons, but um, not the least of which we thought perhaps gay women might be a little more palatable for some of the, the folks or less threatening for some audiences. So we thought, let's just focus on women in the film, except Sydney's story, formerly Cindy Bullens, um, here was someone who lived both sides of the gender line, someone who had experienced uh, the music industry both as a woman and as a man. Um, and yet, uh, in spite of everything that he'd gone through, he remained true to himself. And, he, he, and his artistry um, is authentic as it comes. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, and, I, and I think going back to your, probably your initial question, you know, I mean, I think that the, um, that's probably the biggest takeaway that I um, gathered from spending the time with all of the folks in the film was how, um, when they stood in, in, in that place of who they are and they were authentic and they were vulnerable and they opened their heart up, I, I think that's 
where we find what's universal. When uh, someone goes deep and they rip their chest open and they share who they are, I think that touches everybody. And I think that transcends every, every barrier, you know, of, of race and gender and sexuality. So Ken Burns recently did a documentary about Nashville, well, country music and Nashville, but obviously didn't mention the side of it that you were revealing. Do you think that's a mistake in presenting the whole, the concept of country mu music and what it is? Or is it just another concession to the fear of the truth that their audience have regarding the source of their favorite songs? Yeah, what was the Hank Williams, was it the Hank Williams quote that he used a lot about, all you need is three chords and the truth? Right, uh, right. Which, <laughs> which is kind of ironic because yes. it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a very uh, uh, orchestrated or skewed view of what that truth is. Um, right. I, I uh, although I, you know, I have to say I enjoyed it, but I, I did hear from a lot of folks here in Nashville who, you know, complained about what was missing, what wasn't told, what wasn't included. And yet, um, you know, country music is such a, a huge um, universe. You know, okay. it's, I have a lot of respect for Ken Burns. And oh, I, I love his work. And, I do, I, I, I as well. Yeah. So having said that, the attitude of the business folks searching for new voices, are they becoming looser in a time where people are willing to listen to other points of view if it upticks their bottom line? Oh, that's a, it's a good question. I mean, I, I, it, it is a business. Yes. And uh, the the, the uh, country and the world is changing. Um, um, so I think things like the internet um, and, and the variety of places in which people can consume uh, content uh, might have some influence on the industry, um, but it's slow and it's slow down here in, in Nashville. I mean, we had a young artist I, that um, uh, Katie Pruitt, her song is in the... Uh, um, the closing credits. She wrote this uh, um, unabashed love song to her girlfriend. And um, uh, I wanted her in the film, and, but her manager talked her out of it. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that was frustrating. But I think, you know, after spending the time that I have these last few years, um, uh, I, I know that I don't blame her. I probably don't blame her manager you know, because at the time she was just, just getting ready to sign a major record deal. Right. And I, I think he cautioned her to say, look, wait till you get on the other side and then you could do it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's so hard to have a career and uh, you don't want to do anything to, to, to mess it up. And it's very tricky. Uh, and I think these young people like Katie Pruitt who don't care, um, they are who they are. And I think that that's part of what, what makes their, their artistry so good. Yeah. is that it's real. And Nashville is probably one of the most influential music cities in the world presently and has a certain personality to it. What, in your opinion, are they doing wrong in the context of your film? And not so much about the corporation grasp of it, but the, the aspect of the city and the personality it has. Not even halfway through the project, I did start to scratch my head and wonder how much of what these women were dealing with was because they were gay and how much of it's because they're women. I think that um, misogyny is still a huge problem in this industry. And uh, uh, women are underrepresented, not in just radio airplay, but I think they're underrepresented in key decision-making roles. Um, and uh, as long as you have uh, the same folks in there making the decisions and are the gatekeepers, we're still gonna get the same output that we're getting today. So, you know, I mean, I think there's, there's a, still a, a lot of work that needs to be done to have more inclusion of Excellent. women in the industry. Yeah. This is Patrick McDowell for HollywoodChicago.com, copyright 2021.